Have I been bamboozled or pleasantly surprised by the Bamboo X1C? Let's find out. So I've had the Bamboo for, I don't know how long, look at the last video, how long has it been? And I've been printing pretty much nonstop, averaging about 18 hours a day, doing a lot of long prints, doing a lot of short prints. And I have found a few problems with it here and there. And in particular, I would like to talk about the issues with PETG. But in general, I'm very pleased with the printer. I would say that if you're looking for a more high-end printer, one that you're not going to have to wrench on constantly, and especially something with a lot of fast speeds, rapid speeds in general, that the Bamboo X1 or any of their other ones that they've come out with, I think the P1's, uh, you know, not as quite as fancy as the Bamboo. It's right over there in case you're wondering why I'm looking over there. Uh, they've got a lot of options now, and they just came out with a smaller one, I think. You go to their website, you check it out. But in general, I have been very pleased with it. And the sizing is really good. The speed's really good. It's pretty quiet. You know, you know, you can't really hear it. I mean, you can probably hear it some, but generally it's a great printer. And I would say for the value, especially if you're not getting the one with the AMS on top, that you're going to be very pleased. Now, I haven't even gotten into the AMS, which is where you can use four different filaments at a time because I only use one filament at a time. So I shouldn't have bought the accessory. That was a dumb purchase on my behalf. I think the average customer doesn't need the AMS. It's a lot of trouble. It jams a lot from what I read. And most of the issues that people have with the bamboo is the AMS system. It's not the actual printer itself. So let's get into the downsides that I have seen. And with PETG, specifically in certain, you know, sizes, shapes, ratios of length and width, PETG does like to curl a little bit. And I thought that the bamboo had a heated chamber. It has a temperature controlled chamber. There's a very big difference between a heated chamber and a temperature controlled chamber in that temperature control just means it knows when to vent and that's it. If it gets too hot, it vents, nothing more. So unfortunately, I've been having a lot of curling problems and this one isn't the worst, but as you can see, it like it rocks back and forth on there. And I had to go from the stock, I think 12 and a half millimeters cubed volumetric flow rate down to seven and a half. It's still not totally soft. It's better. These things were really, really bowed because we have a thin shape here. We have kind of this thicker top and the way that it cools, especially with the thicker sides, it, it just pulls it. And not only does it make the sides go up, but then when you bolt it down, it curls in. It just, it's like a taco afterwards and th this one's not nearly as bad i did a single wall on the outside and then three walls where the holes are so that it'd still be stiff enough but yeah you know there's considerations essentially to this now why is it doing it the flexible build plate this is our problem right here so i actually looked and watched it's like is it curling off the build plate no it wasn't it's actually peeling the build plate up sideways like this during the print and it's not coming off but it is it's sticking very well at least we can say that but the build plate being so flexible is the problem with the non-heated chamber now if i could heat the chamber up to like 80 celsius or i'm sorry no 80 would be way too high 50 celsius uh 60 celsius something that gets a little closer to the glass transition temperature of the petg that i'm using then we wouldn't have the problem with it so in the meantime what i've done is i've got some g10 plates uh, not the thin ones but the thick 1.5 millimeters i don't remember who they're coming from we'll, we'll do a whole video on that and that should solve my problem i really hope that it does because otherwise the machine is going to be useless for me because all i print is petg for the most part i guess i could switch to abs but then i'm gonna have fumes in here and i really don't want that abs also really needs a heated chamber they say that you can print ABS in there, but if I can't get the chamber up to, you know, 60 Celsius or whatever, more than likely it's going to have the exact same curling issues with this shape and size of thing. Part of the issue is that this goes all the way to the edge of the build plate. I'm literally 0.1 millimeters under what I can print on here. And since it goes all the way to the sides, it's not pulling from the middle, it's pulling on those edges and it's just curling up like that during the print. As you can also see, layer shifts. I don't know why it's layer shifting. I thought that because of the speed of the printer that we had encoders on the back so that it wouldn't be able to skip. And look at there, we're having skipping issues. I have no, no clue what's causing this. The belt tension is absolutely fine. There's no contaminants on the rails and it's only happening in this direction forwards to back, which I think is why. I think that's Y inside the machine, X and Y. It'd be nice if they actually put that on the build plate, but nah. 
So um, I'm not sure what to do about that. It's only happening randomly. I know it's not in the slicer. I know it's not in the sliced objects itself because I printed the exact same file twice. The first one had no problems. The second one did this, which makes it pretty much unusable for me. Um, I haven't had it in this shape of structure, which is weird. So I don't know what's causing it, but that is slightly frustrating. And you know, this one is like, I can't even remove my supports. The way that this works, there's actually a, a PCB that's gonna slide into this. The PCB won't slide into this. Um, so that kind of sucks. Uh, there's a lot of material and time that gets wasted when you have layer shifts like this on most objects. And you know, I could probably just peel this thing apart because of the way that it was. So I don't know what to do about that. You're gonna have to tell me in the comments, what else could it be? The belts are tension fine. There's no contaminants on the rails. That's really the only thing that it could be besides the printer being dumb, stupid, whatever. It should have encoders in there. For this price, we shouldn't be having open loop steppers anymore. There's, there's just no, absolutely abs no reason at this price point for open loop steppers. But that's a personal opinion of mine at this point. But uh, the technology is there to have closed loop steppers. There's plenty of people that have made aftermarket uh, solutions for that. And, you know, at the very worst, you're going to have a skip of one full revolution if you have an absolute encoder that does not also keep track of you know, how many times that it absolutely rotated forwards and backwards. So it's still an issue that you could have, but a small skip like this, it needs encoders on there or something. And it has skip protection on there. And I went reading the forums and the skip protection does absolutely nothing. Some people actually have more problems with shifted layers when they have the skip protection turned on. So I don't know. I'm not sure what to do on that. And the more of these that I have, the least, the less likely I am to recommend this thing. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's not perfect. It is still a printer. It still has the same problems that other printers have, especially with curling of objects when you're using whatever you want to call it, higher temperature materials like PETG. So I'm going to have to go back to printing on glass for a while, I guess, if I want my prints to come out fine, because uh, the glass will not let, I mean, if, as long as you have the glass high enough, which is going between 70 and 80 Celsius, it will not peel off the glass. It will break the glass before PETG comes off of it. So that's going to be my only option, I guess, until these uh, G10 plates come in. And then I'll be able to use that one. In the meantime, I also got a uh, engineering version. So X1E is what they're called. That one does have the uh, heated interior, whatever, the heated volume. And that should solve it. So I'm, I'm hoping that it will at least. But otherwise, it's been a great printer. I've been very satisfied with the speed of it, with the accuracy of it, and even with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it has great speed along with great accuracy as well. So I'm able to print, you know, these, these housings here are for a heater that I'm developing, and it's working until you start having skips, and then it's a waste of time and filament, which sucks. But there you go. So not all roses on the bamboo X, one C carbon version, but at the same time, you know, it's a 3d printer and it has problems that every 3d printer has. So you're not going to be able to get into these things and just press print and have no problems for the rest of your life. Unfortunately, I wish that that's how it was. And maybe in the future, they'll come out with something that has encoders with a little bit more smarts in there so that it won't have skip steps. And until then, I guess we're just going to have to continue dealing with that. So there we go. Bamboo, Bamboo X one C it's pretty good. I don't feel bamboozled, but I do feel it should be, there, there's some things that we shouldn't be seeing on a printer of this caliber. So, all right. If you do have any questions, leave them down below. We'll do our best to get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.